Hey y'all, it's Megan again. Glad you're here, glad you joined me today. Today I'm gonna be showing you how I'll put up about 50 pounds of meat using uh, technically no electricity except for my light. I have to cut my light on for my video guys or you wouldn't be able to see me. I have a propane stove. I got this back in for Christmas. It was like mine and Andy's Christmas present to each other. We tried to do some upgrades in the house for Christmas for each other. And um, I can tell a difference in my power bill. I really can with my propane stove. So the only electricity that I'm technically using with this stove is the clock. The stove has to be plugged in for the clock and the igniter. But in the event that I didn't have power, I could light this with a lighter. So, um, I could still have fire. You could do this over a fire. So, what I'm doing today is canning some chicken. I'm doing it a little different than the bone-in chicken video you watched a while back. Uh, but if you want to check that out, you know, that's a raw pack method. Today, I'm doing the hot pack method. I like doing this way as well because I get a lot of chicken broth that I'm not going to use in all my jars. I get a lot of chicken broth um, using this method as well. So I've got right now six chickens in here and I'll be doing two more as well. But I've got six chickens in here and um, in boiling water with a ton of herbs and onion, uh, pepper, salt to make my chicken broth delicious and make my canned chicken delicious. Now I can chicken because number one, it's shelf stable and it's already cooked. So that, you know, the jars technically say uh, the lid's 18 months, but as long as that jar is sealed, you're good if you use the correct process and method. So you do have to have a pressure canner to do meat, you know, to prevent botulism and all that good stuff. So we'll be pressure canning today, but I'm gonna let this chicken cook until it falls off the bone. And I'm gonna show you what I do from there. And it is absolutely delicious, easy meal. Anytime you just need some chicken, just go pop you open a jar and it's already cooked. In the event of, like I said, power outages or anything like that, if you don't have a way to cook, canned food is the way to go, okay? Because it's already cooked. Technically, all you gotta do is open the jar and eat it. So that's a great protein source. A lot of people are freaked out by canned meat. I can all kinds of meat. Um, and it's it don't look exactly pretty, but it's delicious and it's easy. Okay, I've let my chickens cook for a good long while. It's a good thing to do on a nice rainy day when you're kind of working around the house, you know, keep an eye on your cooking chicken. Got some nice looking chicken broth in with these chickens. So what I like to do is just kind of get me a plate. Your chicken's gonna kind of fall apart. So just kind of pull it out piece by piece, and then we're gonna pick it off the bone. So now I'm just gonna take my nice clean jar, and we're just gonna start pulling chicken. I did cut it off a while ago and let it start cooling, because I don't know about you, but I don't wanna be pulling a real hot chicken off the bone. <laughs> this works great if you enjoy making any kind of chicken dishes. Um, my favorite is to make homemade chicken noodle soup, chicken pie, chicken and dumplings with this uh, canned chicken. Uh, I don't really make a ton of casseroles, but it'd be good if you're into like chicken casseroles and stuff. Or uh, chicken salad. You can open up a jar and make you a nice big batch of chicken salad. You can can this in pints. You'd rather have it in pints instead of quarts. I mean, so many possibilities. And as I said just a while ago, you have shelf stable meat. This clears up freezer space or is uh, something you don't have to worry about if for some reason you don't have electricity. All right, and I got all my jars full for a canner full. That's seven quarts. Still got a little chicken left, so I'll probably have to do two canners full tonight, but um, so now we're going to take some of this beautiful chicken broth that we have from our chickens and we're just going to fill that up till our chicken is covered. And 
we're just going to do that to all of them. I filled them up with chicken to the first ring on the jar and then like I said I'm covering them up with the liquid till the chicken is covered. So we are going to leave a little head space there. When I get done with this I'll cut my broth back on because I have put all my chicken bones back in the broth and I'm going to let that cook probably the rest of the evening to get me some really rich uh, broth by doing it that way. The longer you cook it, the richer your broth is. Unpopular opinion, if you have extra roosters, this is an excellent way to preserve them because um, it helps your chicken uh, be more tender and your backyard roosters are a little tough compared to what the American diet is used to. I'm gonna go around and wipe all my rims with white vinegar. Got warm water in my pressure canner because our jars and broth and everything are warm. So, you either want warm to warm or cold to cold. So, just always keep that in mind when you're canning. This right here with the white vinegar is going to wipe off any fat that may have landed on the edges or anything that may impact our jar ceiling. So, it's always a good habit to get in. I did this for years without a magnet and I highly recommend getting your magnet. It makes life a lot easier fighting with these jar lids. How's the canning supplies looking in y'all's neck of the woods? I'd love to hear. Seems to be doing a little better this year than last year. Not great, but I am seeing some stuff here and there. So how's it looking where you're at? Whether you're doing cooked chicken or raw chicken, the time is still the same. So for quarts, it's going to be 90 minutes under 10 pounds of pressure. Um, so I'll see y'all in about two hours. While I'm waiting on my chicken to get done, I'm going to be fixing some supper. We're having some chicken nachos tonight. Of course we're having chicken because I had that leftover cooked chicken that wouldn't quite fit. So I decided instead of canning the rest of it, we're just gonna have some chicken nachos. Might as well, right? Let's talk about um, what's going on in the world. You know, we always gotta talk a little bit about that. Right now they're talking about the biggest diesel shortage that has been on record since the government started keeping records 30 some years ago. Now, even though you don't drive a diesel truck, you know, you may not drive a diesel truck, this will still affect you. Whether people realize it or not, diesel runs this country. As bad as this country wants to go green, there's been no new oil refineries built since the 70s because of this going green movement. That's all well and good, but we're not ready as a country to go green. So I don't know if this is in the plan you know, the plan for this country to make us turn to going green. But I don't know about you, but I can't afford a $30,000 electric car plus a $10,000 charger. And I ain't about to. But this diesel fuel shortage can be blamed on a lot of things. And you can blame it on whatever you like, but it is here. Uh, we may see some changes coming in the next couple weeks if something doesn't give. And they can't just pull diesel fuel out of the air, unfortunately. So I want you to be prepared. Don't panic, but be prepared. Know what you have stocked up. Be stocked up for at least a, I'd say at least a month. Um, 
make sure you, you've got what you need. Because we don't know, you know, what the, there may be a couple weeks there that the grocery stores don't get delivery. So don't be one of these people that goes to the grocery store every other night um, to get what you're having for supper. Go ahead and, you know, be ready. But just, just, just be prepared. Hope for the best and prepare for the worst, okay? But things just keep, um, things just keep happening. And I can't, I hate to say that it's just a coincidence. Um, I think there's a bigger plan that we may not know about yet. Left on my counter. All right, we're all cooled off, so I'm gonna take the lid off. Always remember to lift the lid away from you because there's gonna be some steam. All right, let's get these out and see what they look like. See how good that looks? Hope y'all can see that good in the video. These look great. We've got some beautiful canned chicken and its own chicken broth. So anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned a little something. Be prepared. Hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Always keep that in mind. Stay vigilant, stay busy. You know, anything could happen at this point. Uh, everything's kind of up in the air. So anyways, I'll take y'all next time.